So actually, the <coughs> plot, again, is for now, is very, very uh, uh, simple. But Pushkin's secret is not the plot, but what he made uh, with this uh, uh, plot. Uh, the point, uh, uh, the novel uh, consists of numerous uh, lyrical digressions from the plot. Uh, as one of Russian literary critics uh, argued, the true plot of Yevgeny Onegin <coughs> is not the story of Onegin and Tatyana, but a game with this plot, which is conducted by Pushkin with the help uh, of the figure of voice of the narrator, a very interesting and very important uh, figure uh, of uh, Pushkin's uh, novel. In fact, the narrator, the author of Pushkin and quotation marks, can be called the central hero, I mean, man and, his main, uh, and the main invention of, the, uh, of Pushkin. Uh, he links uh, this heterogeneous material. He observes the heroes from a distance, gives himself a role in the plot um, as a St. Petersburg friend of Anigin. Pushkin includes in his novel actually his own friends, which also makes the text very domestic, very like intimate uh, for his most immediate um, uh, environment. The narrator deviates constantly uh, from the main narrative line, picks the reader's imagination with fascinating poetic pictures and recollections, thereby inducing a feeling of being present in the world. Playfully deceives the reader's expectations, draws him uh, into uh, a game of hints and jokes filled with double and triple uh, entendres uh, uh, to create a kind of Matryoshka doll text uh, that still attracts scholars um, uh, wishing to unpack it. Um, as Nabokov uh, puts it, Pushkin was a brilliant wit, especially so in his correspondence. But he did not shine in the didactic genre, and his indebtedness to the elegant generalities of his time, or more exactly of a period just previous to his time, is sometimes painfully evident in the rather trivial observations of the social world, women, custom, and mortality uh, that occurs throughout Yevgeny Ani. Uh, the narrators favorite topic, though, is the theme of flow of time, or to be sure, the ever-growing distance between the moment of writing and the poet, um, uh, as well as his hero's youth. Uh, in the sixth chapter, uh, the narrator says, I will quote an English translation, uh, can it be really true that finally its God is withered, withered, and it be true that really and indeed, without elegiac devices, the springtime of my days is fled, as High and Jess kept saying hitherto. And can it be that it has no return? Can it be true that I'll be 30 soon? <laughs> I think that uh, when I read uh, uh, the novel the first time, I was 16 or something, maybe even, oh no, uh, 15, and I remember uh, the emotion was different from what I'm incorporating <laughs> 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 in uh, uh, now. Uh, can it be true that I'll be 30 um, uh, soon? Pushkin was. 30 when he finished uh, the novel. He goes on, so my noon time is come. Uh, <laughs> and I must acknowledge this, I see. But anyway, as friends, let's part. Oh, my light youth, my thanks for the delight, the melancholy, the dear torments, the harm, the storms, the feasts, for all, for all your gifts, my thanks to you. In you, amidst turmoils and in the stillness, I have delighted, and in full, enough, with a clear soul, I now set out on a new course to rest from my old life. The theme um, uh, borders uh, no, uh, another essential topic uh, in uh, Yevgeny Onegin's um, work, that of uh, death. Uh, here is uh, one more quote uh, which portrays the death of Lyansky, killed in a duel uh, uh, with um, uh, Onegin. He lay quite still and strange as dreaming was that calm brow of one who swooned, shot through below the chest and streaming, the blood came smoking from the wound. A moment earlier, inspiration had filled uh, this heart, and detestation and hope and passion, life had glowed, and blood had bubbled as it flowed. But now the mansion is forsaken, shutters are up, and all is pale, and still within, behind the veil of chalk the window panes have taken. The lady of the house has fled. Where to? God knows. The trail is death. Pushkin would have been profoundly serious, but the very next moment she switches the tone, and he becomes ironic, uh, playful. Um, um, he jokes uh, all the time. Some jokes are not very uh, uh, polite, a border, some kind of uh, dangerous uh, zones. But immediately he switches the tone uh, and becomes uh, uh, serious and uh, elegy. 
you can never ever catch him. And that creates a very specific picture of Pushkin's uh, fluidity. Because um, every single moment you may expect different tone. Every single moment you may expect um, a uh, different uh, theme uh, to uh, emerge. And every single moment he addresses to you, uh, uh, the reader, as if you are his uh, very close uh, 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 friend, relative, um, another uh, uh, poet. Uh, I would say that Pushkin's range and diapason, the diapason of his voice, is extremely broad, and again, very unpredictable. Uh, for the Russian reader, Evgeny Onegin is definitely more than a marvelous uh, work. Actually, my grandmother uh, knew, I would say, a third uh, of uh, this uh, novel in verse by heart. Mm -hmm. I still remember a dozen of uh, stanzas, but I'm already afraid of quoting them. Memory, maybe I can do something for it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Evgeny Onegin, uh, Russian culture is one of the old texts. Um, and besides its enormous artistic qualities, Pushkin's work made several major contributions into Russian um, uh, culture, which I want to uh, talk a bit about. Uh, uh, First of all, uh, it suggested the very formula for the Russian national novel of the 19th century. Those of you who read Turgenev, Tolstoy, or some novels of Dostoyevsky can recognize certain themes and motifs, uh, or even formulaic um, uh, patterns, uh, which uh, actually are derived uh, from uh, Pushkin's novel. It was the first uh, serious national novel in Russian literature. A paradox, it was written in verse. Uh, number two. Uh, the novel introduced a new hero, the so-called superclose man, um, uh, who suffers kind of Russian spleen, Kandra, hypochondria. This is a very prominent figure uh, in Russian literature of the 19th and, I would say, the first couple of decades of the 20th uh, uh, century. Uh, the uh, man who cannot find himself uh, in uh, uh, life. There's an entire mythology uh, behind uh, this literary uh, creation, which again originates uh, in Pushkin's uh, Anil. Uh, Tchaikovsky, in his opera, actually follows this pattern and elaborates on Anegin's spleen, um, creating this sentimental, melancholic um, uh, uh, person uh, who cannot feel himself at home uh, in this uh, world, who is always in motion and never ever will find uh, happiness. Um, number three, uh, the novel created an image of the ideal Russian woman, Tatiana. They tended to interpret her as uh, the very embodiment of the Russianness. As you can see, uh, the readers, the critics, uh, the artists of the consequent uh, eras use Pushkin novel uh, as this mythological, I don't know, modeling for ideas and um, uh, uh, image. Tatiana was extremely popular uh, in the uh, debates um, of the 1870s and 80s regarding uh, the ideal of Russian uh, woman. Dostoevsky participated in these debates, and he believed that Tatiana is definitely the perfect. Um, also, Pushkin's novel introduced a series of extremely brave experiments with literary form, uh, which attracted Russian scholars in the 20th century. Uh, the novel uh, presented the 1810s and the early 1820s as the spring of Russian culture, its lost paradise. The myth of the Golden Age, closely associated with Pushkin's Anegin, had been canonized by the Russian authors of the early 20th century, and in the last third of the century was even transported uh, across the ocean by Joseph Brodsky. In his poem dedicated to the famous Russian ballet dancer, uh, Brodsky revived the motifs and devices of Pushkin's head, actually of the stanza uh, about Istomina, uh, the ballerina. Uh, here is a quote. How splendid, late at night, old Russia rolls apart to watch Barishnikov, his talent still as forceful, the effort of the cult, the quivering of the torso rotating round its axis start at light, such as the soul has yearned uh, far from, uh, far from the fates, as old makes cherry dreams while turning into bitches. And as for weighing space and time one store and touches, well, earth is hard all over, dry the states. Uh, the last but not the least um, of Pushkin's contribution uh, is the fact that Pushkin's novel in verse became the source for inspiration of Pyotr Tchaikovsky. Uh, his uh, opera, uh, 1879, actually uh, the uh, professional premiere of 1881, uh, with the subtitle Lyrical Scenes for the Small Audience and Private Atmosphere. It was a transposition of Pushkin's novel, and actually the differences between uh, uh, Evgeny Onegin by Tchaikovsky and Evgeny Onegin by Pushkin are tremendous. Uh, uh, Ivan Turgenev once uh, wrote, undoubtedly, remarkable music, particularly lyrical, melodious passages are good, but what a libretto. 
And actually, uh, there's a tradition of reproaching um, uh, uh, Eugenia Negin's uh, libretto for departing from Pushkin's original, which is not uh, a good idea because uh, the uh, opera is a very different genre and you cannot judge opera with the libretto. But still, it's very interesting that uh, Tchaikovsky changed not only the plot, the details, he changed very many ideas and the very uh, atmosphere and emotional atmosphere of his opera is very far uh, from uh, Pushkin's um, uh, book. Just one illustration, and I, well, I now almost finished. Uh, one of the most famous uh, areas of uh, Tchaikovsky's uh, opera uh, is um, uh, the Prince uh, Grumman uh, area to love all ages are obedient. I don't know who performs this area in your... We have one right there? Oh. Yes. Well, yes. Oh, sorry. So in English translation says, to love all ages are obedient is impulses are beneficial both to the youth and in, in his pride, who has hardly seen the world, and to the faith-tested warrior with gray hair. And even, I won't try to conceal that I love that young man. Rarely my life uh, was flowing away, she appeared and gave me, like a ray of sun amid foul weather, life and youth and happiness. The first line belongs to Pushkin, to love all ages are obedient. But uh, in the original poem, uh, these, uh, this line has nothing to do with Prince Graham. First of all, because this character does not exist uh, in uh, uh, <laughs> But what there is a husband for Tatiana, but the only thing we know about him is that he's fat. And <laughs> these, are her, her, uh, these are actually her words. Who is this fat general, she asked before she actually met. Um, um, uh, 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 the uh, line uh, to love all ages are obedient, which most Russians associate with Evgeny Anik, mm -hmm. like it's operatic, as well as um, uh, the poetic line. Uh, in Pushkin's novel, it's presented in a very different way. Here it is. Again, this is not a translation. Uh, it does have uh, a rhyme, so deeper, um, <coughs> but it is literal translation. Very hard. All ages are to love. Actually, it is uh, pronounced by uh, the narrator himself, and it addresses Anik, and he is fallen in love uh, with uh, Tatiana when he comes back to St. Petersburg and encounters a beautiful uh, high society lady, Lily. All ages are to love submissive, but to young virgin hearts its impulses are beneficial as are spring storms to fields. They freshen in the rain of passion and renovate themselves and ripen, and vigorous life gives both lush bloom and sweet root, but at a lane and barren age at the turn of our years, actually the third. Um, sad is the trace of a dead passion. Thus, storms of the cold water in the marsh transform the meadow and strip the woods around. Totally different uh, idea. Uh, it's really tempting to think that the only happy person uh, in um, uh, Evgeny Anigin uh, by Tchaikovsky is this Prince Kremlin, uh, who is, uh, because all other characters do not find uh, uh, happiness. Neither Pushkin, the narrator himself, but of course it, it is not present uh, in um, uh, the uh, author. It's even more tempting uh, uh, to point out uh, an interesting parallel uh, between the last words of uh, Prince Grumman's um, uh, area, like a ray of sun and foul weather, life and youth and happiness brought back, with most famous Pushkin's poem um, um, addressed um, uh, to Anna uh, Karen, uh, uh, um, I recall a one uh, uh, moment. But again and again, uh, uh, Tchaikovsky's version of Prince Gurm does not exist uh, in Pushkin's text. And the idea of to love all ages are obedient is presented in totally different uh, uh, form uh, in the poem, much uh, sadder. There is an interesting polemic about Pushkin's uh, novel, uh, which uh, started as early as uh, in the, uh, 18, uh, uh, the end of the 1830s and beginning of the 18th. Is Evgenia Negin a manifestation of pure art or the mirror of contemporary life, social life? A very influential Russian critic, Ritik Belinsky, called the novel the encyclopedia of Russian life. And we at schools actually learned this definition by art. Uh, never think that it is not as uh, 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 simple. Uh, in the 20th century, uh, Vladimir Nabokov uh, did not agree with uh, this formula. It is not a picture of Russian life. It is at best the picture of a little group of Russians in the second decade of the last century, he argued. The paradoxical part he went on, from a translator's point of view, is that the only Russian element of importance is this speech, Pushkin's language, undulated and flashing through verse melodies, the likes of which had never been known before in Russia. In other words, 
Pushkin's, uh, Pushkin preserved his unique voice rather than his unique epoch. Um, a 20th century Russian writer once undertook a curious experiment with portraying the flow of uh, time. Actually, uh, he elaborated on the Latin uh, saying carpe diem. You can't physically capture uh, or see uh, a moment, but you can document what is happening at this moment. So, you know, for example, one, two, three, nothing happened. And so, uh, I have documented a moment in which nothing happened. I told my friend about this. He was very taken by this and said the whole day counting, one, two, three, and made note that nothing had happened. These words are applicable, I believe, to Anegin's plot in the novel. His life, as portrayed by the author, consists of these notorious one, two, three, nothing happened. And whenever something, anything happens, it's for nothing, like uh, a death of Yemsi, uh, a duel. It's a wasted life. Yet Pushkin's plot, or the narrator's plot, is very different. The novel documents the wondrous moments of life as perceived by the poet. Theater at the moment uh, when curtain raises, Dance of Histomina, a meeting with his friend on the banks of uh, the Iba River, the sea waves uh, kissing the feet of uh, a beloved, the glittering snow of Russian winter, sparkling wine, reading of poetry, countryside cemetery, and so on and so forth. These, uh, this magician, one, two, three, sees the very pulsation of bygone uh, life and bring it back to us in the form of his ever living voice, not only through the darkness and boredom of centuries, but also through mesmerizingly beautiful music of his great contemporary, of uh, uh, his great uh, compatriot. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and again, <laughs> now is the time for questions, if anybody can. Okay, I think it was very clear. Oh, yeah, there is a question. Yeah, please. Yes. You mentioned at the beginning that these poets in the 18th and 19th centuries kind of saw themselves as maybe rivals or that they had European Uh, a, a 
Penserosa or, or any melancholy, um, uh, beautiful, pensive uh, young uh, lady, uh, usually an older sister uh, in the family who likes reading and walking and uh, watching, I don't know, moon. So the background is definitely um, uh, Western, but Pushkin managed to nationalize this character to make it really recognizable. First of all, he used uh, the Russian name uh, to greet its origins, uh, uh, Tatiana. Uh, he also mentioned that she has a Russian soul. She made a, uh, numerous very interesting links between her uh, character and the very nature of uh, Russian countryside, especially um, links uh, which connect her with the Russian uh, winter, one of the most important themes uh, for Russian national uh, literature, national uh, uh, mythology. Of course, her character, uh, when she, um, which is uh, revealed throughout the entire poem, and Pushkin attitude toward the character. Pushkin is basically the narrator in love with Tatiana. Perhaps he doesn't want to uh, uh, give it to um, uh, Anegin um, uh, because he was in love with her. One of his friends, uh, when he read the novel, uh, that Tatiana is Pushkin himself. So he portrayed his own uh, uh, soul. This is from Pushkin's uh, uh, perspective. Uh, from the perspective of Russian uh, literary critics and writers of the uh, um, 1840s uh, up to um, 1870s, Tatiana increasingly, uh, increasingly became more and more like an embodiment of Russian national character. Pensiveness, love for nature, uh, she is not showy, uh, she is uh, uh, sad, uh, but at the same time uh, she is full of love. Uh, she uh, is in a way heroic. Uh, and um, uh, her character is uh, really uh, strong. Turgenev uh, used Tatiana as a model for some of his characters uh, in his uh, novels. So this is a long story of appropriation, adaptation, little education of, of, a, of a character created uh, by Pushkin out of the material which he borrowed uh, from uh, uh, Western uh, literature. And there are many Tatianas actually, or relatives of Tatiana, because I think Tatiana in Russian literature up to the 20th, perhaps 20th, Century. There's a book about Tatiana in Russian culture, which is very interesting, written by uh, our neighbor professor of uh, uh, Princeton University, Olga Hasty. I can never get my head around in the opera why the guys go through with the duel. I always want to say, stop it so he's going to get hurt. <laughs> story short, uh, Pushkin uh, presents um, uh, the duel as if something happened just unexpectedly, without any uh, reason. And it's based on the mere set of conventions uh, which the participants uh, uh, follow. Uh, Anigin did not want uh, to accept uh, a, a challenge, but he didn't want to seem a coward uh, by um, um, mm, Lensky Secunda, uh, who was a famous Britter uh, and who kept this Hold uh, of uh, uh, duel and um, touch. So he accepted the challenge. Uh, the duel happened. The friend was killed uh, by a friend for nothing. There was absolutely no reason, like serious reason, uh, for doing this. But it's a part of Pushkin's vision of uh, the character of Anigin, and in a way of life uh, uh, itself. When many things happen out of the blue, uh, without any serious uh, motivation, because we waste our life. Because uh, life uh, sometimes is just a set of conventions. From the very beginning of the uh, novel, uh, Anegin is just a part of high society life, and he follows these patterns uh, uh, from the beginning of the day uh, up to the uh, to midnight, and then on and on again until he is disillusioned. But his disillusionment uh, is also quite banal and without any uh, uh, action. So in this case, duel is not the central event as it is portrayed uh, uh, by uh, Tchaikovsky, but sadly enough, this is a tragic outcome of the very boring and prosaic, uh, prosaic course of life, which is subjected to rules, regulations, and which is meaningless, and which is so different uh, from uh, what the narrator presents, with his appreciation of every moment, with his interest in various characters, with his recollections of the past, uh, with his um, just enormous love for his own uh, uh, novel as a part of um, uh, himself. So I don't know if I answered your uh, uh, question, but in the opera, the duel definitely, in, uh, opera is much more melodramatic, and it presents uh, uh, the moment in a very, it's a very serious, very important one. 
I don't want to downplay uh, Pushkin's um, portrayal of the duel, but it definitely does not play such an important uh, uh, role. It began after Pushkin's death in a duel, and they started to associate um, they, uh, Pushkin with uh, Lensky. And uh, that's what um, uh, made Pushkin's uh, uh, death, in a way, operatic um, uh, for um, uh, Tchaikovsky. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.